On last week's episode of Onboard Lifestyle, we lifted basic with the Yard's Brown Owl hydraulic trailer. We'd spent a few months on the hard, so this was a milestone moment for the crew. All the hard work and the countless hours all seemed to fade away as we saw our home slowly travel the length of the yard towards the launch ramp. It was a long 10 minute journey down a gravel road, but the yard crew of the Napa Valley Marina, they've done this a thousand times, so basic slid back into the murky Napa River with ease. Once we were back in the water, we decided it was time to leave Napa. So the next morning, we left at high tide in order to avoid grounding. The Napa River Channel markers are far apart, and if you wander, the river gets shallow fast. As much as we enjoy the Napa Valley and all of the friendly people, we were very excited to be moving again and start exploring new places. The morning started out pleasant enough until we hit San Pablo Bay. The winds picked up and, of course, turned right in our face. Even though the wind was against us, the strong ebb tide was in our favor, so we made great time. We covered 32 nautical miles in just over 4 hours. It felt so good to be underway. So it's official, we are now in San Francisco Bay, and actually it's uh, Richmond Bay to be exact. I gotta say, this is just beautiful. We got here and it just got warm. It's 81 degrees today, so I am very happy. You know, and I'm I, I, celebrating. I, well, you know, I've <laughs> observed this over the years. Lynn is like a thermometer. You can tell the temperature by what she's drinking. If it's cold, red wine. The warmer it gets, the lighter the color. So look at 81 degrees, she has a nice rosé. Gets in the 90s, she goes with a nice crisp white. If we get in the hundreds, it's all bubbly. And brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that. We want to do something that's very different than our usual. Well, before we get into that, what? look at these views. We're looking at downtown San Francisco, Brooks Island, across the bay here. It's just I, I just can't get enough of this, so I'm just, okay, go on, sorry. <laughs> He's in awe. Anyways, okay, we want to do something that's different than our usual videos, and that is talking about cost. You know, typically we're real private about the financial end of things, but we thought this might be a little fun to... I think it's a little interesting so that you guys can kind of get a concept or an idea of what it takes for a build like this. Yeah, and this was just one project building the hard top and we had a couple other things that we did while we were on the hard so so you're gonna break it down we're gonna break it down and look at those hard costs oh, i gotta say it was very painful <laughs> counting and and adding up all those receipts but it had to be done and it came in i mean nothing was shocking so let's get into it <laughs> I'm just going to jump right in here. I've split this up into three categories. The hard top, miscellaneous projects we did while we were on the hard, and compass, <laughs> see somebody on the dock. No. <laughs> and the yard feed. Come here. Get over here, buddy. <laughs> so let's talk the hard top. You know, there's quite a bit of material that went into this hard top. And the biggest expenses were the epoxy and the fiberglass cloth. Yeah. The epoxy resins and fairy compounds came up to $1,140.21. Ouch. I know. <laughs> it was an ouch. The fiberglass cloth, $1,203.04. Ouch again. <laughs> the core and the edging material wasn't so bad. 
We used the Carbon Core, which was the polypropylene uh, honeycomb panels that we got from Carbon Core, and the PVC moldings uh, that we actually picked up from Home Depot. The total there was $721.85. That felt pretty good because we ordered that first at the beginning and I was like, this is not bad. That's we're right. Gonna, we're, on, we're in good shape. <laughs> it was nice to stagger these expenses over the course of this build, but we still had a ways to go. Uh, paints and primers. And we used uh, the, you know all the paints we used. Yes, yeah, so we used the all Interlux brands just because we're familiar and very comfortable with it. So we used Bright Side paint for the top coat. Um, the we, barrier coat. We did the barrier coat, which is a 2000E, uh, which is great for uh, epoxies. And, and it works great above and below water yeah. line. I mean, it would, probably wasn't necessary above the water, but it was nice. We just have learn that it's yes. just better why not use to the right product, the right product yeah. and then so then that way the paint won't fail and the total on the paints and barrier coats was $614.78 the metalwork that was our our shocker we had just that was a, another ouch <laughs> yeah we just had a few posts built and this was the only thing that we didn't do ourselves we subbed that out to a, a local uh, metal fabricator and you know okay so he quoted us or he alluded that it would be a lot less because teal did all the heavy work of all the templating uh, but when we got the bill it was a lot more than what we anticipated but you know, you know i don't know if there was really, a i don't know if there was a miscommunication i, I can't complain the guy he is did a, a really good job so we can't really complain because yeah. we have to post and they were very the, the, very everything well was spot on yeah hump is it's a he cheeses flies. Go get it, buddy. Go get it. Oh, go get it. <laughs> so the metal work came in at $985. Next item, we had some miscellaneous hardware to attach the metal work. C Compass, you're never going to catch it. Get over here, buddy. Come here. <laughs> Come here Just $15 worth of uh, nuts and bolts to uh, attach uh, the posts. We had some miscellaneous items as well. Uh, originally we built a big wood frame it was a, a mold and a, t a platform for us to uh, build this hardtop on and what else was in there we, we had, had to rent uh, we rented one tool one, one day, tool for a day and there's some other little miscellaneous items total two hundred eighty dollars so the grand total for the hardtop and the just the raw the material yeah material in, in the material costs four thousand nine hundred fifty nine dollars and eighty eight cents now, I know that sounds like a lot. This is 118 square feet of uh, coverage that we have here. It's $42.03 a square foot. That's with the helm top as well. So. And that, Yeah, exactly. That's everything total. And we have all the materials to finish this out, uh, and we'll be doing that here shortly. But I guess my point is this... This wasn't out of line for us. I mean, we kind of had it in our mind. You know, we're not adding our labor costs into here because, I mean, how do you... How it's do you, your home, and so you, you can't factor that in because you're always going to improve on your home, your boat, anything that's yours. And so it's it's hard to put a, you know, a, a dollar amount on on your own labor. So the labor alone. I, I know, people will put that though, <laughs> but you know what, this is... Uh, it wasn't out of line. It was right where we thought we'd be. We yeah. thought it would be right, right around five thousand dollars in cost, and we came in within just uh, well, within forty dollars of it. I mean, we, we could have saved a little bit if we bought, let's say, uh, the five-gallon drums of epoxy, right, um, or something like that. But you know, it's it's also nice because we're in the yard um, and to support the the store there as yeah, well. Yeah, they have a small chandlery there, so we were buying a, a a gallon at a time as we needed it, and it worked out real well. I. I you know, it, 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 the reason behind that also is we didn't want to have any waste and we didn't want to have extra reserves kind of on board right. because of the weight factor. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be nice to buy a five gallon jug and then have four gallons left over. We wanted to be kind of light and lean when we left here and we have a little bit of epoxy left and we'll, we'll use that up, but that's where we came in. We felt okay about that. <laughs> okay. So. Yard fees. Yes. So this, this one was a little... And this is misleading to me, the yard fees, because we're going to yeah. give you a number here that sounds outrageous, but 
there's a lot of factors involved here. Let's okay. dive into so, this. So haul out for our boat at Napa Valley Marina came out to thirteen hundred sixty four dollars. And, and that includes the haul that's out. That's including the um, you know, haul out and relaunch. But also, it's different because uh, there's different rates for if you're up on their sled, I guess. No, well, you have the, the trailer versus uh, their rail system. The rail system. So, um, it's a little bit less on the rail system, but on the rail system, there's a time limit of yeah, they, how long you can be on there. Yeah, the rails are made for, if you're going to be out of the water to for like a, a, a couple days day. or a couple of weeks, the rails work great. Yeah. But if you're going to be up the time that we were. Right. Uh, so, what they have to do is, that, so they charge you a little bit extra to put you on the trailer. Oh, go get it. Jeez. <laughs> so, it keeps him very busy. <laughs> Uh, so it costs a little bit more to haul out because they have to put you on the trailer and then move you to a spot and then jack you up. And they use extra <laughs> jacks they, uh, for... Jack oh, you <laughs> up. Let's call it... They put you on jack stands. So. I like They don't I jack say. you up. Let's strike that. <laughs> anyway, Napa Valley Marina, use, good people. <laughs> so they use extra jack stands and that costs a little bit more as well. Right. So. Thirteen sixty four and, for the haul out and relaunch, and w that is in line with other places we've hauled yeah, out. Uh, exactly. It's not outrageous. That is, uh, we've hauled out in other places, and I mean that's it's a reasonable price. Right. Okay. So the next thing is is that they have a if you're there for more than fifteen days, there is a I don't know how to well, say. Well, the it. first fifteen days. The first fifteen days they charge you lay days in versus just being on the hard and at a monthly and, rate at yeah. a monthly rate yeah so the first 15 days they charge you for our boat 75 dollars a day which amounts to 1225 1225 or sorry 1125 still yeah. ouch um so that is not included in the monthly fee so the first two weeks that we're there they charge you lay days at 75 dollars a pop and then we get to the monthly fees Yes. Well, and after you pass those fifteen days, you're on a monthly uh, a monthly charge, yeah. charge, which is better uh, because at that point we are paying six hundred dollars a month uh, to be in the yard, and then um, and and so that so yeah yeah I mean that's pretty uh, it's pretty standard I and, mean uh, every that's marina totally reasonable every I mean six hundred dollars a month is not bad um, so that amounted to how long we were there. Thirty-one fifty. Three thousand one hundred fifty dollars. Yes. So, and then we were there a total of. Well, let's get this. In Napa, we were, we showed up there. We spent one night. Then we were on the hard for one hundred sixty-one days. Ouch. We launched. We spent one night and left. So we're talking a total of one hundred sixty-three days in Napa. So, thirty-one fifty. I mean, we're going to be paying fees if we're at another marina somewhere else but we don't want to be in marinas obviously I know, I know. but you know in the winter time it's to, cold to do and projects to do and do projects, this yes and this it's was just a convenience factor and, and this was a kind of a, a different time for us regardless i mean we're dealing with a pandemic where we wanted to get some projects done so it just worked out well for us okay then the last is live aboard fees so they charge you uh they charge us um, a live aboard fee on top of having your boat in the yard, and that is three hundred dollars a month. So we for paid three a three people. Yeah, so we paid one thousand so six hundred eighty dollars, yes. and that is to cover the electrical, the the water, the usage there's, basically. There's the showers, facilities. there's facilities, there's all sorts of things that that uh, covers. Right. So the grand total. So grand total for one hundred and sixty three days <laughs> of yard fees is. Seven thousand three hundred and nineteen dollars. You know that sounds so, yes, that sounds terrible, but Teal uh, broke it down as he does uh, per day. Cost per day, forty four dollars and ninety cents. Now, if we were to jump into, you know, a marina downtown San Francisco, we could pay a couple hundred bucks a day there. So forty four dollars and ninety cents. I am not while we're working on the boat. Yes, is, I mean it's it's like totally reasonable. I mean it was something that we needed to do, and so we bit the bullet and we did it. So that's the cost for our yard fees.
The last subject is <laughs> the miscellaneous projects. Now, I call it the bonus. Bonus, bonus well, project. Th these are things that, you know, we were going to get done. Anytime you haul out, these are the items that you want to get done regardless. And so we're going to kind of go over a few of those as well. We serviced the sail drives. So we had sail drive zincs, sail drive paint, uh, through holes, bottom Gear paint, things oil, like that. Yeah. All sorts of things. The sail drive zincs, for, uh, we had two sail drives, both zincs, $45.90. The sail drive paint, uh, the Trilux 33. We had a can already on board. But we, we had to buy another yeah, one. We purchased one more. $53.86. That's right. One can of paint. $53.86. <laughs> so, you know, it seems to me that seems like it's crazy because everybody associates a can of paint with three to five bucks. But this stuff but this, protects if, your if sail drive. Means, yes. If that means that our, our sail drives are protected, I. I I would rather pay the fifty-three dollars oh, and geez. ninety-six cents it's or worth, eighty-six it's cents. It's worth ten times that or a hundred times that. My sale drive. That's right. And we have two, That's so right. it pencils out. We did the the through hole bypass, uh, the alternate intakes for our engines, and uh, we ordered the parts, and that came to a total of one hundred seventy dollars and eighty-three cents. That was. Uh, I'm happy. That we did that and i feel much safer uh knowing that we have an alternate way to cool the engine so uh that was a must bottom paint was obviously we needed we used how much two two gallons two gallons and a quart yeah two and a half gallons, two and a half gallons or yeah roughly that's always a, a shocking number you know bottom paint is uh and we used the we're still very happy with our bottom paint. Yeah, it's the after, Interlux bottom you know, coat, fiberglass bottom coat aqua. Right. After 15 months of coming down the coast, the only barnacles that we saw that had growth um, was on our transducer, and that wasn't well, painted bottom, with that, yeah, yeah. wasn't painted with bottom paint. So um, we're going to continue with this product until it proves us. Yeah, otherwise, right. no, no. And I'm, um, we right. do like the hard scrubbable. We're not fans of ablative, so. Yeah, it's no you fun. Know. You know, we plan on uh, the the further south we get, the the more we're going to be in the water. So I'm not a real fan. I know you guys aren't either of jumping out. Of, you know, after swimming we, alongside the yeah. boat and having little Brush. black scup marks of of bottom paint on you. Yeah, it's not that good. And you know what? It just means that it gives us extra reasons to exercise and dive and just scrub the boat. That's right. So I see that as a win-win. So that the, the, one the, was. Four hundred and seventy dollars. So all the little extra miscellaneous things we did while we were on the hard totaled out at seven hundred forty dollars and fifty nine cents. That gives us a grand total over the hundred and sixty three days of thirteen thousand nineteen dollars and forty seven cents. Grand total. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <sighs> So yes, that was um, sticker shock, I guess. Uh, but you know, it, I think that it's it's better because if we were to have somebody do this, we would still have extra costs of right. being somewhere else um, and not having the quality control. Right. And, and obviously, this... people are you know, craftsmen, tradesmen are going to charge a lot more for their time. And I I guess the. A big point that I want to make clear is that could we have done this cheaper? You know, everybody wants to know if we hired it out, could have been done faster, could have been cheaper. You know, that to me, I mean, we've spent so much time on this boat and we've kind of put our heart and soul into this boat. And it, I don't know, it pains me almost to sub it out. I love to work on this boat. So it's going to be something that's, that well, it's our pride and joy. It is. I mean, and it, it's, a, it's a labor of love. and It's our, it it's our feel, life. It's our hobby. It's our it's everything. It would so. be foreign for Teal to relinquish the, the control of the, the quality of the build to somebody else. So could we have done cheaper? Maybe. I don't think so. M well, maybe. I, I Who knows? I don't think so. Honestly, I mean, I've talked to friends. They have, you know, obviously they have different boats. Every boat is different. Everything is customized on a boat. And from what, you know, I've heard from other, you know, other quotes they have received, obviously in other parts of the world, 
it was a lot more than what we were willing to to dole out i have to say uh, yeah i, I want to continue cruising i don't want to break the bank right and i think that um we feel good about it you know it at the end of the day it's it's you know you have to feel good about your decisions and, and i feel good about our decision and you know we built what we wanted it turned out exactly as we thought and we couldn't be happier and it is now a teal wind design that's right with with a lot of emma and compass influence where of is course. emma <laughs> she's been swimming and paddle boarding all day where is she still out here? Yes. What? Hello. <laughs> now that we have the breakdown of the haul out taken care of and broken down for you guys, let's go to the next question, which I'm sure that a lot of you will ask. And why did it take 161 days to build this hardtop? That's and the quick answer is, is it didn't take us 161 days. It's just life. And, you know, we were on the hard 161 days. And for us, we didn't document when we were working, when we weren't working. But it's easier to take those 161 days and look at the other aspects of our life that took away from us working on the hardtop. And so let's kind of work, our, work this uh, problem backwards and see... <laughs> How many days we actually worked on the hard top you know we've we know that my back went out yes so and that it was about 10 days total but lynn was able to do some work on the boat so we're going to take off seven days off of that total of seven days of not being able to really do much and i mean i think that's pretty lenient it may have been more but we're going to call it seven days we had five orthodontic appointments for Emma, and those are big days for us. And it's about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minute drive. Each way then... we have the appointment and we'd usually do grocery shopping and we kind of burn the whole day for that. So we're going to back off five days uh, for orthodontics. Uh, when we first got to uh, Napa. No, I'm going to talk about this. So okay. when we first got to Napa, Teal had been feeling um, kind of under the weather and we didn't Obviously, we're not going to talk about that because who wants to hear about that, right? Yeah, it was rough. Um, but really, the, the biggest thing was is that he was really lethargic and just run down. He was nauseous a lot, and we were kind of concerned. And sleeping. And sleep, he was sleeping a lot. Yeah. Anytime he wasn't working, he would kind of just nap. sneak I mean... off and take a nap. And so we knew something was wrong. So we had to go and find a way to get a doctor to diagnose him and find out what was what was the the issue. And it was a quick, easy fix. Well, it's hard because obviously we're traveling. We don't have our normal doctor. So, and with with COVID, you know, it's not like you can just walk into right. an urgent care or anything. Right. Everything is video, Zoom, new type protocols, of, yeah, yeah, new protocols. So we. We're able to figure out that it was his medication, and uh, we found a great doctor um, in the Napa Valley that was able to diagnose him and switch him, and that took a good six days to yeah, kind of would, straighten out. Well, I, I would say it was probably a few weeks of me feeling this way, but I'm still working half the day, so we're going to call it six days of loss. Yeah. I think that's uh, appropriate. And then obviously the big thing is filming and editing, and yeah. that takes a lot, the bulk of our time. Running our channel... Uh, you know, we were on the hard 22 weeks, three days a week, easy is what we both put together uh, and work hard to get this channel going. That's a total of 66 days of the 161 days was just dedicated to filming, editing, uh, social media, and doing everything it takes to, to run our channel. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, if you were just to do a, a, a project... You know, you don't normally figure out the lighting and, and angles and stopping to explain what you're doing. You just do it, right? Oh, I know. And it's so it takes a little bit longer for every project to get completed. We'll be laying up a fiberglass layup and we look back and all of a sudden the, the sound was scratchy or <laughs> the camera battery ran out. So we'd have to end up retaking it. So it's all these little hidden things. 
66 and, days, we're allowing for that. And that is, again, uh, conservative. I think you're being very <laughs> conservative on that. And then the, the well, other Well, hey, I want to talk about this. Weather was a big factor, but I'm not going to even count weather. I had 22 days of, uh, really of, bad weather. of severe weather or cold weather or extra windy or just just driving rain that we couldn't work on the hardtop. But those days I could edit on, so I'm not even going to count the weather days. He's being nice. Uh, I'd say the second biggest thing that uh, chews up most of our day is Emma's homeschooling. Um, we we're split. Pretty, we're very hands-on in regards to her education. That's so right. So we kind of split it up, but it still takes a yeah. And so what will happen you know, is a few hours a day. A few hours. We, we about four hours a day total between the two of us. We we spend with Emma doing uh, her homeschooling. And she's doing great, by the way. Yes. <laughs> I'll do two hours, and Lynn will do two hours. So if we just take those two hours times those 161 days, because she goes seven days a week to homeschool, uh, that's 40 40 days to take off of of our total. Then there's the materials and travel. Right. Getting things. Not everything can be shipped in. Right. So Uh, we spend a total of only three days over the whole course uh, for traveling yeah, to get materials. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good about trying to optimize. It's like, okay, I get my list of things that we have to do if we have to get um, out of the yard. And I really try to limit my time outside of the yard so that we can really get some work done. Right. But sometimes it just, you know, we just have to do it. Okay, another one, I, I call this miscellaneous because it's things that you don't really think about that pull you away from uh, your your daily job. And that would be running to the store, uh Getting groceries, doing laundry, do I mean, going on walks with Compass. These are things that chew up a big chunk of the day. But we're only going to call this, over the course of the 161 days, 11 days. Uh, and I think, again, that's pretty conservative. There were five holidays that we... That we just kind of took yeah. a day off and just... Can you name them? I, I counted well, them off once. We, we count Thanksgiving. Yep. Christmas Eve, yeah. Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Well, that's already five there. But then you I have... I mean, there's, you know, our anniversary or whatever. Anyways, there's holidays. So we only counted five days off Right, because it's days. nice to take five days off for a special yeah, day. Yeah, I think so. So if you add up the days and working ourselves backwards on this, we were there 161 days. We just rattled off 143 days. That only leaves 18 days for the build. Now, obviously, that's probably not accurate. But I base these on eight-hour workdays. So that tells me that we were working 10, 12-hour days to enable to get this done. So 18 to 24 days, if we were to do nothing else, we could have done this project. I think we could. And, you know, I mean, literally, if we could have been able to do this, like, say, in a, a warehouse or you know, an enclosed place, I think that... And not have anything else in life to do, but besides this, it would have went a lot faster. It would, but, you know, if we feel okay about that after figuring out that, you know what, yes, these projects must go on, but life happens too, and we're trying to enjoy it as much as we can, given what we've been given. We've always said, you know, our life is not a race, it is just an experience. And we're having a lot of fun, right? That's right. It's only going to get better. (laughs) This is where we kiss. (laughs) Just force yourself. (laughs) Bring it in. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Onboard Lifestyle. If you liked it, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. It feels so nice to be in a new area and the weather is starting to get warmer. I'm taking full advantage getting my swimming in and lots of paddleboarding. Summer is right around the corner and I am ready for some fun. I even made a friend in the bay already. These videos were made possible by the support of our awesome patrons, and we are so grateful to them. Join our crew if you can. Come back next week to see another awesome new video. See you then!